Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel today, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today we're joined again by Dr. Owen Reese. Dr. Reese, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be able to talk about this new project. Now we're going to come to a very controversial subject. A lot of my subs really enjoy this theory, and they really want to know more. And so my question is, what was the Dorian invasion? And did the Dorian invasion result in the destruction of Mycenaean palaces? Right, yeah. So the, there's a few things to kind of unpick here. You've got um, the sort of the Mycenaean palaces, their destruction in what, about uh, 1200 BC, that kind of area. And it's one of the kind of, I really hate the word mysteries. <laughs> Um, it just it, it makes people go immediately down a conspiratorial route, but it is one of those uh, questions to answer, um, and it's an interesting one. Um, and there's loads of research on this. So for, within the Bad Ancient team, um, this is the uh, bread and butter of uh, one of our founders, which is uh, Joshua Browers. He will go on a rant about this to anyone who is around to hear it, um, and uh, it's he who predominantly wrote the article on this on the website do check it out for more detail uh, than i can give you here um because he's an archaeologist by trade whereas i'm a historian so i come from a lot of these questions from just a historical perspective and you've got to appreciate this and you, you'll have this with your um on your channel i know you do where you've got different co uh, contributors come from very different perspectives doesn't make any of them wrong just means you've got to bring them all together to get an answer so Within the uh, kind of the disappearance of the Mycenaean palaces, the destruction of the Mycenaean palaces, it's been merged with this idea of the Dorian invasion. So from the historical perspective, it's the Dorian invasion bit that interests me. Um, so, you know, what is the Dorian invasion? It's the idea that the Dorians are this external group who come into Greece from the north and basically... Um, ransack for one of their term their way all the way down south and then locate themselves in various areas um in particular sparta um that does become relevant later um you've got to ask the first question where does a story like this even come from this was linked by later historians uh, sorry 19th century historians um they found or they interpreted a greek classical greek myth which is the return of the descendants of Heracles. So there's this idea that the descendants of Heracles basically do this journey through Greece. Um, and that was used to kind of explain many different things, um, including the Spartan two king system, both of which claim to be descendants of Heracles. Um, but it was also used to explain something that kind of bothered classical Greeks, which was the, the ancient Greeks predominantly had three dialects, Ionian, which is sort of uh, the one that the Athenians kind of share, and it's pro possibly the most uh, prominent, Aeolian and Dorian. So you've got three major linguistic uh, families. Okay. So to the classical Greeks, they're kind of like, why? You know, and they love their, what we call, ideological myths. So the, uh, the origin myths, um, which I guess we can kind of understand now with all the origin stories we're obsessed with in film. Uh, you know, it's these kind of origin stories that people like. Um, and so they came up with it and they have this story of um, the descendants of Heracles that do that. Uh, this was basically interpreted by historians like, okay, so we need to historicize this myth. Okay, so clearly these aren't descendants of Heracles, but what are they? You know, um, and they came up with this idea that the Dorians were an external group who uh, invaded from the north um, at a time where people like to explain historical change through dynamic action. Invasion is a dynamic action. Yeah. It's the same when we see turning points in history. You know, one battle changed everything. You know, we like the simplicity of that. So a simple explanation as to why the slightly um, later uh, arrival of the Dorian dialect uh, is invasion. And then this grew and it grew uh, through the 19th century into the 20th century. Like, okay, so they come from the north. Where did they come from the north? This kind of got picked up by the Nazis. Uh, <laughs> and then it quickly became that it was fundamentally a Germanic invasion. Um, and this kind of 
pave the um, the groundwork to the Nazi rewriting of Greek history and Spartan history in particular, the Dorian warrior. I use that term loosely, warrior society that they like to claim some form of connection with. Well, not only were the uh, Spartans um, strong, powerful uh, uh, warrior group, not only did they also practice eugenics, but they were also Germanic problem solved. Okay, so this is kind of the the basis of the Dorian invasion uh, model. There was a counter model which was, well, this invasion thing is a bit uh, simplistic. Maybe it was a migration. I haven't really solved the problem in any way other than saying it was less violent. You know, that's fundamentally the difference between a migration and an invasion. Um, so this was also a sort of a concurrent uh, parallel theory going through. And it is co- popular and it's hard to get rid of because of its simplicity and because of its... Um, uh, it's really easy to follow. Oh yes, a group comes in, supplants the group that was there, a dominant culture disappears, maybe it was violent, uh, and they bring in a slightly different language that merges with the language. Oh yeah, this makes perfect sense. And um, there's nothing innately uh, ignorant about that. You know, so I'm not criticizing people who think this at all. Um, but the, the evidence just isn't there when you realize that this entire invasion migration thing is based on one Greek myth and very little else. <laughs> so there are competing theories to explain these kind of changes, including the Mycenaean palaces. Um, the obvious counterpoint to anyone who says an external group came in is, well, why didn't it happen internally? And if you think, well, Another possible model would be that there's an internal uprising of a different group, whether that's a, um, a more suppressed group, whether that's a lower economic status group, whether that's a different, um, what you and I might call an ethnic group. Um, you know, there are lots of other dof- uh, different possibilities. If you look at um, the Bad Ancient article on this they give for uh, your show in particular gives a lot of further reading on this um because there are so many competing theories you know so when you know i'm not here to tell you what the actual answer most definitely is that's not the point the point is that the dorian invasion is pretty much dismissed by most scholars not all but most scholars now do dismiss it um and it's worth rather than arguing about these old ideas why don't we start talking about the newer ideas and where their merit lies Thank you.